Well, that's over. It's time to show you guys this thing. Oppo says that once you go foldable, you will never go back. And honestly, so far for me, that's been true. I've enjoyed my last six months daily driving the Galaxy Z Fold 3, but that doesn't mean I'm not ready for some fresh ideas. I've had a number of issues. Hello? Th this pull to, oh. Oh, I see. Oh. I've had a number of issues with the Z Fold 3, including its sort of unwieldy form factor, the super tall form factor, which can make it a little bit difficult to handle in folded mode, as well as some software anomalies like YouTube, which I consider to be a pretty fundamental mobile app, doesn't include the stories feature. Okay. The crease has been more noticeable than I initially allowed myself to admit, and battery life has not been amazing. With that said, I'm clearly still daily driving it. So am I a believer in foldable devices? Absolutely. And at least on paper, I might just be a believer in the Find N as well. Oppo has sought over the apparently six internal generations of hinge designs to address pretty much every complaint that I have. And there's some that I have a lot of hope about and some that I have a little less hope about. So right out of the box, one of the things I noticed was that the fingerprint sensor, it's in about the same location on the right hand edge. But if you notice on my Z Fold 3, for whatever reason, Samsung hasn't seen fit to wake the device simply by touching the fingerprint sensor. You actually have to press it kind of like a phone from many years ago. Oppo does away with this. You simply touch the fingerprint sensor and boom, you're off to the races. I love the hinge. Like, listen to that. Ooh, and it actually feels as good as it sounds. Compare that to the Z Fold 3, which in fairness has been daily driven for a while now, but it's just not the same experience. One issue with foldables, by the way, that I've experienced over the last little while is that it's really hard to keep the center screen clean. Like normally it's just kind of a, uh, you know, you slide things in and out of your pocket. They can't get that dirty, but my center screen gets really, really dirty. <laughs> It's just, it's not quite flat. And it's one of those stupid little things. It doesn't really matter. Like, obviously I'm still using it. It's not ideal. You can see that, right? Yeah. It's yeah. just a couple of millimeters, but honestly, I think it more than makes up for it in the aspect ratio. Because while the Fold Z3 is this kind of weird, tall, hard to type on thing, this, especially if you're someone who used a candy bar phone like way back in the day before, before the iPhone, it's actually kind of familiar. It's got kind of like a, my old Blackberry vibe. And aside from not being a huge fan of the included keyboard, I didn't find the prediction very useful. Uh, the actual ergonomics of typing are great. Can't believe it took me this long to pull out the banana. Okay, so the Z Fold 3 is about three quarters of a banana. Okay, I've got the uh, Find N. It's about half a banana in height. Okay, lttstore.com. <laughs> Oh, and this video is brought to you by Volta. The Volta Spark 60 Watt is a nylon braided charging cable that features their snag safe magnetic connection tip to prevent the risk of accidents. It also allows convenient swapping between lightning, micro USB and USB-C tips. And they have another Spark version that's a 100 watt version with quick charge 4.0 to power your Google and Samsung phones faster. Use the link in the video description to get your Volta Spark cables risk-free with Volta's lifetime warranty and 30 day money back guarantee. Now, of course, you don't buy a foldable phone for the outer display. Let's talk about the inner one. It's 7.1 inches. It's LTPO OLED, which basically means that they've sourced it from Samsung, including their ultra thin glass. What do they call it again? Whatever, Oppo's marketing name for it is Flexion UTG. And in a nutshell, it means it's 0 0.03 millimeters thick, which is what allows it to fold. And it uses the same LTPO OLED panels that Samsung is using for their own devices, which means it gets nice and bright. It'll do up to a thousand nits and it's able to operate at variable refresh rates up to 120 Hertz, giving it a very smooth feel. The first thing I noticed though, wasn't the refresh rate. It was the lack of visibility of the hinge. Like the Fold Z3, it's fine, but <laughs> it is not on this level. Like, look, if I try to catch the light here, you see that? Oppo's hinge is really cool. So they've got this internal shot in their press materials that shows you what they've done. Samsung, okay, 
So they've actually got, see, they've got a gap in the phone there. What Oppo's done instead is they've taken that probably realistically same bend radius and they've built it into their hinge in this kind of teardrop shape inside the hinge hardware. So not only does it make the phone sort of flatter when you hold it, but it means that foldingness, that hinge is spread out so much more that it is basically impossible to detect, except when you go out of your way to catch the light, kind of like what I'm doing right now. Okay, here's another cool thing. That was muscle memory from using the Z Fold 3, where I would open up full screen content and immediately go like this in order to make the most of my screen size. But on the Find N, you don't actually have to do that because it's immediately open to landscape mode when you unfold it, thanks to their form factor. So it definitely has a screen size disadvantage compared to the Z Fold 3, but from a usability standpoint, I gotta be honest with you guys, I probably do 75% of my use on the front display. You know, messaging with people, making phone calls, doing normal things like that. Do another like 20% of my use here where I'm remoting into a computer or looking at a big spreadsheet or something like that. And then on those rare occasions that I'm consuming content, it's now a couple of extra interactions to get that, that couple of centimeters of extra screen diagonal. This is a lot more natural feeling. It really is, even in the couple of short days that I've been using it. It's also way more pocketable. Look at this. Oh, oh, this is something really cool. Check this out. So on the Z Fold 3, you can set your apps to carry over to the front display. And that's something that you can do on an app by app basis. Uh, Plex. If I am watching something and I close it, it will automatically open up on the other screen. Oppo, in my opinion, actually has a better approach to this. So if you wanna continue what you're doing, you close the device, see this, boom, you swipe up. So you don't have to just decide on an app by app basis what you want the behavior to be. You can decide on a use by use basis what you want the behavior to be. Super cool. They're multitasking also really neat. So you can throw any app into a floating version of itself. Oh, this app does not support floating windows. Okay, well, supported apps can be opened in a floating window. Fine, whatever, Play Store, there you go. So there's your floating window. Stop, stop, I've seen this before. You can drag it around on the top, and this is really neat. Okay, for whatever reason, I need my clock. So draw this down the center. There, I've got my docks open on this side. Super cool, right? Cool, right? I mean, I think it's cool, whatever. Oh, you feel like they did it better than Samsung. Well, the other shoe is about to drop because there are definitely some issues compared to Samsung. Shorts and stories. All my features are here in YouTube, but then watch this. Just because uh, my YouTube app works perfectly doesn't mean I'm gonna have a perfect experience in every app. Oh, oh, what was that? Hold on, let's try another one. Let's open up the YouTube. Why is my shoe sideways? It turns out that whether this is a, an Android developer best practice or whatever the case may be, the default behavior for many apps is to open in portrait mode. And it seems like they detect that based on the, the pixel count in either direction, instead of being based on how the device reports its portrait mode. So instead of having to rotate your phone for the rare occasion where you're consuming media, now you actually have to rotate your phone to just use normal apps on the inside display, which I personally did not find to be better. Uh, and and uh, honestly, the, I, didn't, I didn't cherry pick those two. Like I've only been using it for a couple days. So there you go, there's another one. I had not tried Mobile Bandit on this yet. Uh, yeah, Spotify? Okay, Spotify manages to open in the mode that I'm in. Awful, awful foldable Instagram experience. Okay, that's that's bad on any foldable device right now. Another issue I ran into was handleability. While I really like the shape compared to the Z Fold 3, this finish, gorgeous. Oppo calls it glittery glass, I think, and it's, man, you can't appreciate it properly until you've looked at it up close. From the from distance, it's just like matte black, and it looks great. Close up, it's gorgeous. Unfortunately, it's slippery enough that, especially on a device like this, that's got a lot of weight hanging off of your hand, 
I had major concerns about dropping the device and it's the kind of thing that I would like to cover with a dbrand skin or other similar electronic sticker rather than leave naked. Oppo's also behind the competition in terms of their IP rating. They don't offer any kind of certification for dust or water resistance for this device. And this is something that is perhaps built into it as we saw in the OnePlus factory tour that we did a number of years ago. But the fact that they're not certifying, it means that I, I wouldn't with confidence take this and put it next to my bath to watch TV while I'm sitting in the tub or whatever the case may be. Now, I actually have not used the speakers much because I just paired my earphones to them, but apparently they're Atmos. There's two of them. That's a plus. I mean, here, let's, let's crab rave it up. Yeah, those are great. And honestly, the rest of the hardware is pretty great too. It's using a Snapdragon 888. It's got 12 gigs of RAM, a 4,500 milliamp hour battery. That is very close to what is in the Z Fold 3, which actually I have had battery life uh, issues with. And it has support for Oppo's Dash Charge, or rather Super VOOC, I think is what they call it under the Oppo brand. It comes with a 33 watt charger. It supports 15 watt wireless charging with 10 watts of reverse wireless charging and has triple rear cameras with Sony's IMX766 sensors. I did notice that whether it's a processing lens or sensor issue, the main shooter is markedly, haha, <laughs> get it? Markedly, um, <clears throat> less noisy than the others, but that's uh, your, your mileage may vary on that one. Look how washed out this zoom one looks. It's not even dirty. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're not buying a foldable phone for the camera, quite frankly, anyway. So don't consider this a full review, but unlike most short circuits, I did spend a couple of days using the device and learning its ins and outs because I did intend to do a full LTT video. I just ran at a time before the embargo lift, which means I wanna share a few deeper thoughts with you. On the hardware side, I love it. I think they have done an absolutely fantastic job. The only things I could really ask for are an IP rating, a micro SD expansion slot, I mean, a little thinner, a little bigger battery, you know, all that usual stuff. But overall, I think they've done just an outstanding job of the hardware. It's on the software side that Oppo has to really step up to impress me, especially if they want to sell this thing outside of China. This thing is chock full of just apps Hi, that I have no idea what they do. I have absolutely no way to remove them that I can see other than just denying them notifications. There was no obvious way to change my voice assistant from whatever this is to Google Assistant. You saw on the Play Store, I searched for Netflix. It didn't bring anything up. That's because out of the box, Netflix isn't compatible with this device. That's probably something that I could solve by sideloading it, but that's a hassle. That's a hassle that most people don't want to deal with. And so I think they've got some work to do. Clearly. Their competition isn't doing a perfect job either. So one of you, one of you step up because from a hardware standpoint, I'm happy with either of them. Honestly, I think Oppo's got a little bit better, but the software is where the experience is still being let down and Oppo has more work to do than Samsung. Actually, I should see if Samsung has magically fixed this. Nope, still no stories. Okay, fine. Subscribe. Woo!